Good morning, everybody. Hi. Uh, my name is Claire O'Connell, and I am a scientist, science writer, science journalist, science communicator. I wear lots of different hats. Um, this particular hat this morning is a project that uh, I'm working on with the Royal Irish Academy, and it's about distilling wisdom from masterclasses. So don't worry, I will explain what a masterclass is in a moment. Um, but it really gets to that core of, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where maybe you hear an expert talking on stage at a conference or they're being interviewed on the radio or the TV and you just go, oh, I'd love to know more about their story and what kind of wisdom got them to where they are and maybe what new wisdom have they crystallized from their experience. Um, so really this project is, is about capturing that kind of wisdom from experts and bringing it to a wider audience. So it's called a Masterclass Book Project, or at least that's what I call it in my head. <laughs> and it's a di kind of a different kind of project for the Royal Irish Academy. Um, and it's, it's based on the fact that for about the last 10 years, masterclasses have been taking place here at the Academy or online, where you had experts speaking with small groups of people. And we wondered how you could capture the kind of wisdom that these experts imparted, because people would come out of these masterclasses buzzing, having spent time with somebody that they really admired. They got a lot of information from them. And a lot of it was two-way conversations as well around the room. And, and we thought, how, how can we sort of capture, you know, it's like catch that butterfly and share it, share it with, with the wider world. And the answer was a book. So it's not the first time that I've worked on a book um, with the Royal Irish Academy. Um, a couple of years ago, I worked with um, Professor William C. Campbell on this book, which is uh, the story of his life. For anybody who doesn't know who Bill Campbell is, he is a Donegal man from Remelton in County Donegal. And I know we're sort of hearing a lot about the Nobel Prize this week in the news because people are getting their phone calls from Stockholm to say they won. Well, in 2015, Bill got that phone call to say he won. He won um, a, prize, a Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine for his work on parasitic worms. Um, and he was particularly involved in the development of a drug called ivermectin which was a huge agricultural drug and it's also been used in humans um, to uh, to alleviate river blindness and that drug was made available to people who needed it so um, it's, a, it's a it's a big success story and Bill was part of that and he'll say himself there were a lot of people involved um, but he was the one that Stockholm rang so he got got the Nobel Prize so I went over and spent time with Bill in North Andover in his house and uh, we, we wrote this book together. And then on his 90th birthday in June 2020, uh, there you can see myself and Luke O'Neill giving it a good launch, despite the fact that Bill couldn't come over uh, because of COVID. But uh, we gave it a good launch anyway. So um, I had been working with publications and, uh, you know, I really I really liked the people there and we seemed to get on well. Um, you know, Ruth and Helena and uh, Valeria and, and Fidelma, everybody really. And um, so uh, I was quite happy when the opportunity came up to write another book with them. So just to explain to you what the, the basis of this book, you know, the well the wellspring of this book, I suppose, the masterclasses, um, the Royal Irish Academy developed a masterclass format, which was the, the brainchild of Porrick Dempsey. Some of you in the room may know Porrick. He was, he was with the Academy for a long time. Um, and basically, a visiting expert sits with a small group, maybe 10 or 15 people, uh, students, professionals, around a table, as you can see in the picture here, and uh, speaks about their career. And then the participants get to ask the person questions. And um, we have discussions guided by a moderator. Sometimes that moderator has been me, sometimes it has been other people. So the masterclasses have been running in that format, either in Academy House or online since 2012. And they featured Nobel laureates and other global leaders in their fields. Then in 2018, Accenture teamed up with the Royal Irish Academy to run the Women in Leadership Masterclasses. So the plan was to do about four to six masterclasses um, per year, uh, either in Academy House or when COVID hit, we moved online. Um, and so they've been running very successfully. And I moderated most of them, not all of them. Some people from Accenture moderated them as well. People like Michelle Cullen, Alistair Blair. Um, and I wrote summaries of the discussions after each masterclass. And just to make the point that uh, no more than writing a book or winning a Nobel Prize, it takes a lot of people to bring these masterclasses together. So thank you to, to people like Karen Muldowney in the, in the Academy and to, to people in Accenture as well who worked very hard on that. As we went through the masterclasses, a lot of topics came up. You can see there's, there's one with Mary Harney. Um, 
And for some of them centered, some of them sort of clustered around work. For instance, people wanted to know, how do you get the most out of meetings? Meetings are such an important currency in work and in organizations. And how do you prepare for those? How do you get people on side? How do you sort of get your innovative ideas heard? How do you get your voice heard, maybe if people aren't really listening? Um, we also talked a lot about finding and being a mentor. So, you know, can you find a mentor who is totally outside your field or maybe in a completely different age group, older or younger indeed? Um, and how do you become a good mentor as well to other people? Sometimes people might be in relatively early stages of their career, but they can still be helpful mentors to others. We talked a lot about navigating hierarchy. That was something that people wanted to know about too. Uh, society and a lot of work organizations are really hierarchical and um, learning how to navigate those sort of uh, barriers and hurdles along the way, finding out who you need to be talking to about a particular idea is very important. Um, and dealing with sexism in the workplace came up as well. Most of the masterclasses were um, with experts who were women and the participants were women. So um, there was a bit of discussion about that. Um, and really, it, it's, a, it's a difficult subject, but uh, what came out of us, some suggestions were, if it's appropriate, try and defuse a situation with humour or incredulity. Say, oh, I can't believe you just said that, that kind of thing. So they were kind of helpful, helpful tips. <laughs> um, other topics of interest that people gravitated towards centred more around life. So how do you balance time and energy for work and home life? Um, and that balance is going to sort of shift and change over time as your family goes through different stages and as your career goes through different stages. And as well, how do you get perspective on purpose and career? How does one feed the other in that so that you're not sort of working on something that you're not really interested in? Um, or, you know, how do you sort of weave the purpose into your career? Um, very importantly, we spoke a lot about building a support network and looking after your mental health as well. That, that was a big, a big topic of discussion. So we did these masterclasses and, as I say, I wrote the, the discussions of them um, and we would share those discussions with the participants. It was kind of an aid memoir of the topics that we discussed. Uh, maybe if somebody had mentioned a book or a resource that they found helpful, these would be in the summaries. But how could we actually get those to a wider audience? And this was where the idea of a book was born with the working title, Work Life Lessons from Leaders. And we wanted it to be a really short, digestible book of key insights and tips from leaders in their field. So this would not be a weighty tome that would sort of, you know, you'd have to do a weightlifting class to lift up. This would be a very small book that you could dip in and out of. You could read in a whole sitting if you wanted. The material was there from the masterclasses. That's uh, Mary Kelly doing hers. Um, we just needed to extract the gold. So I went back to the summaries, uh, went back to all the notes, um, and we identified key messages from different speakers um, and they sort of naturally fell around themes and then uh, the process of, of, of writing began. So the book is now in the editing phase um, and it is due to be published in early 2023 to tie in with La Ale Brida, uh, which probably seems a fitting, a fitting kind of time to, to launch such a thing, uh, particularly because so many women were involved um, <clears throat> in the in the masterclasses and uh, we'd like to also sort of build up a, a wider network of the women who are involved as well. So I just wanted, before I finish up, um, I just wanted to give you an example of some of the, the tips that came through. I'm stressing that this is still a work in progress, so it's still all a bit fluid. We're still in, in the process of editing, but you can see here um, Fidelma Slattery has, has uh, developed beautiful artwork around around the messages, which I think are very visually attractive and I think will make the book um, even more special. Um, so one of the tips was to make exercise, make time for exercise at the start of the day. And, uh, you know, something that simple, something like just, you know, setting your alarm and making it non-negotiable that you're going to get up and you're going to do a little workout at home or you're going to bring the dog out for a walk first thing in the morning. That can set you up physiologically, mentally really well for the day ahead. Uh, so if you, can, if you can make that part of your routine, that's great. Um, another one uh, that's very important for leadership is uh, valuing people and nurturing talent. So I suppose remembering that the people that you work with and who are in your organization, if you're a leader, um, are people and people like to be recognized for what they do. So if somebody does a great job on something, drop them a note. If somebody has a success, congratulate them or maybe, you know, uh, recognize it throughout the organization. Um, and to nurture talent as well. We had examples of 
really high-flying people saying that they could track back their ambition and their confidence to a comment that somebody made quite early in their career saying, oh, you'd make a good whatever it was, a CEO or a university president or, or whatever it was. Um, so sometimes those little comments um, and just spotting someone with talent in the organization can be very important. I like this one as well. Suppress the need to be perfect when balancing your professional and personal life. So I think we can get caught up in today's world, particularly I think now that we're a little more isolated with COVID and we're, we're looking at things online and, you know, a lot of people will put their best foot forward online and everything looks perfect in their world. So we're striving to be perfect in all aspects of ours as well. But sometimes you just have to give yourself a break and accept that sometimes good is good enough and getting to perfection may burn you out, uh, which, is, which is a long-term outcome that you don't want. I like this one too. Stop saying you are just lucky, start saying you are good. Interestingly, this per the person who said this uh, did not grow up in Ireland. I think sometimes in Ireland we have this thing of like, if somebody gives us a compliment, says, oh, you did really well there. We're like, oh, it wasn't really me. It was the whole team or oh, just right place, right time. Um, you know, and, and instead of, of, of thinking that yourself, you should start thinking, actually, I did do a good job there. Or I got that job because people think I'm able to do it. Or, you know, I, just building up your confidence about what you can do. Um, be pragmatic about reaching goals, forge ahead, say no wisely, that's a good one, and let others in. So sometimes when you, when you want to reach a goal, you have to be focused on it. And that sometimes means you need to say no to things that might deflect you from that goal or take up your, the, the finite resource that is the time in your day. Um, and to let others in as well. Uh, one, of the, one of the leaders um, spoke about how when she got to a certain certain level in her career, she couldn't be the expert on everything. So she had to bring in uh, people who knew about kind of subfields in her organization and, her, and, and across her, her world um, and bring in really good people whom she could trust to advise her on those things. So letting others in is important and it empowers people in an organization as well. When the door open, goes in, does what it says in the tin, opportunity knocks and off you go. Um, I thought this one was really interesting. You may be part of the problem, be open to that. So there's a degree of vulnerability in there, but it's one that's very honest. And I think sometimes we can find it hard to see if we are doing something that's causing a problem in an organization or for a project. And, uh, and having the sort of the, the, the open conversations, the difficult conversations sometimes with people um, to find out, well, where does, where does the source of the problem lie? And realizing that you may need to change something you're doing as well. When faced with a new situation, challenge or opportunity, look for the familiar and hold on to that as you learn. So um, yes, the person who said this had been thrown into some very interesting situations around the world. And uh, she always said that no matter where she, where she landed, where her feet landed on the planet, you know, she could just find something, something that looked a bit familiar. And, and she would hold on to that sliver of familiarity and, and use it as kind of an anchor or a basis as she got to know the rest of the environment. And, and she found that very helpful. So what I learned from the project so far is that experience is a great teacher and that it is important to share and pass on what you've learned um, because that's a, a, a generous thing to do for other people and it may make all the difference to someone, that one sentence you, you say to someone. I learned that insights and advice don't need to be complicated and often, often the simplest tip or analogy is actually the most useful. You know, um, some of the, the people who were giving the masterclasses told great stories about what they were, what they were doing in their, in, in their career and, and how they overcame hurdles. And that really resonated with people. But, and they were very simple. Um, also, for me, I found if you create a comfortable environment, everyone can learn. Because when people were coming into Academy House, you know, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful setting, but it's also, it's very august. There are a lot of, you know, kind of severe looking books up there and you might feel a little intimidated if you weren't used to it. Um, and maybe you are sitting around the table with somebody you've admired for years. Maybe you've, you've wanted to meet them for years. Um, so as a moderator, I really tried to break the ice and make it a structured but informal environment and tried to make sure that everybody could have a speak, you know, even if they were a little shy in doing so. And the same thing when we went online, just making sure that everybody could, uh, could, could talk either on camera or if they wanted to put questions into the chat function. I also learned that people appreciate humility and honesty. And I think um, that is something that we're seeing increasingly in leadership now in, in the world. Um, well, some parts of leadership in the world. Um, but uh, I think it, it helps to make much more open uh, work environments and um, where everybody, everybody can hopefully advance fairly. So thank you very much for listening. And um, I will finish up there. Thank you. Thank you.